All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. What we're going to do is we're going to do another example problem where I have given you the zeros uh, or the x-intercepts of a polynomial, and I'm asking you to find me the polynomial that has those zeros or x-intercepts. And again, I apologize. i got typos flying around all over the place. I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, actually, what I had written um, was the exact same problem that we just did, and, and that's ridiculous. We'll, we want to do a new one. So go ahead and cross out that 5 minus i because we did that in the last problem. Let's do this. We're going to make our complex uh, 0, 1 plus 2i. So thanks to the complex conjugate theorem, I know right away that my zeros are going to be x equals negative 1, 1 plus 2i. And the complex conjugate theorem tells me 1 minus 2i must also be a 0. So we're going to go ahead and set up our problem, multiply it all out. Remember, the i's should completely drop out. If the i's don't go away, you made a mistake. So here we go. Again, we're going to call it p of x because we're finding a polynomial and I can name it whatever I want to. Feel free to name it after yourself if you want. We're going to have x minus a minus 1. Remember, that minus sign is part of the formula. Remember that the equation you're using p of x is equal to x minus p times x minus q times x minus v dot dot dot. Right? However many of these you need, depending on the number of zeros you have. But recognize, the minus sign is already in there. So please don't lose that minus sign. You need it. And then I'm going to have x minus 1 plus 2i. And then I'm going to have x minus 1 minus 2i. Let's go ahead and distribute our minus signs, and then we'll actually get to the distributive part. So p of x, it's going to be x plus 1. It's going to be an x minus 1 minus 2i. And x, oh, sorry, x minus 1 plus 2i minus 1 plus 2i. All right, here we go. Trying to leave myself a little bit more space. Maybe this time I won't have to squeeze. I don't know. Let's see what happens to me. x times x is x squared. x times a negative 1 is going to be a minus x. x times 2i is going to be 2xi. Right. Now negative 1. Negative 1 times x is going to be a minus x. Negative 1 times a negative 1 will be a plus 1. And negative 1, negative 1 times 2i is going to be a negative 2i. All right, last one. Negative 2i times x is going to be a minus 2ix, or 2xi, whatever. It doesn't really matter what order you write them in. Multiplication is commutative. Negative 2i times negative 1 would be plus 2i. Ooh, look at that. I don't really have to squeeze. Yay. Um, and that's going to give me negative 2i times a positive 2i, which is going to be a negative 4i squared. All right, here we go. I have plus 2xi minus 2xi. So those guys drop out. I have minus 2i plus 2i. Those guys drop out. And remember, i squared is equal to a negative 1 which means I have a negative 1 times a negative 4, which is actually a positive 4. So let me write a little note over here. That's going to become a positive 4. Let's go ahead and rewrite this guy. p of x is equal to x plus 1 and everything that's left, x squared. Negative x, negative x would be minus 2x. Positive 1 and a positive 4 plus 5. All right, guys, you're almost done. Here we go. We're going to distribute all of this together to get our final polynomial. Let me slide up just a little bit so you guys can see what we're doing. x times x squared, x cubed. x, uh, that will be a negative 2x squared. That will be a 5x plus. Again, 1 times anything is itself. So I'm just going to rewrite this guy. I'll have plus x squared minus 2x plus 5. Combine like terms. Uh, that's going to leave with a minus x squared.
squared uh, plus 3x plus 5. That takes care of everybody. And run through it real quick. I had three zeros, um, and I have a polynomial that is third degree. So the fundamental theorem of algebra checks out. 1, negative 1, 3, and 5. All my coefficients are integers, so I'm good there. So this is the polynomial representing the three zeros that I gave you in the problem. Guys, thanks so much for joining me for this set of videos. Um, I had a lot of fun working through just some additional stuff with finding the zeros or roots of a polynomial and using Descartes' rule to find all possible combinations of positive real, negative real, and imaginary roots. I'll see you guys next time.